My final question has to do with Indiana's right to work law. As everyone knows, Indiana became the 23rd state to enact a right to work law um, this legislative session. Uh, I'd like to know what your thoughts in general are with regard to that legislation, number one. And number two, how you might use whatever advantages you see or derived from that law, specifically with regard to economic development in Allen County. I'll start with you, John. I certainly support it. I think some of the rationale behind it maybe was a little bit overstated. You know, the last time we heard that that something was going to bring jobs here by the thousands, it was daylight savings time. You know, that that, that really comes back to how we sell these things. It, it's it's not a, a do-all, end-all economic development tool. It It's a simple matter of choice. Where else in society can somebody legislate your requirement to pay dues to an organization? Other than, you know, other than government, you know, you're paying your dues to government in the form of your taxes every day, but that's about it. You know, it's a simple matter of, of freedom of choice in this state. But you know, I think it sends a positive message when we go out there and we try to get the jobs we want instead of the ones that just fall on our laps, that, that this is a place where your employees are going to, to have more opportunity to, to make choices on their own. They've got the freedom to say whether or not they want to organize and whether or not they want to participate in the unions. So yeah, I support it. You know, this is one of these questions where I wished I'd have gotten the opportunity to go first because I'm not sure that I can I can say a whole lot different than, than what John said. I actually wrote uh, a guest editorial back on October 2nd of last year supporting Right to Work right before it was going through its first uh, committee session down in Indianapolis. And my rationale for doing so was, was really twofold. Uh, one, it is about individual freedoms of an individual to uh, join or not join uh, a union. And the second part really had to do with uh, some of the economic development concerns that, that John talked about. You know, you can make the numbers say whatever you want the numbers to say. I listened to the debate for a long time and you had the, you had the collective bargaining side and you had the, uh, the right to work side um, with a lot of these numbers. Um, just a couple as an example. Um, eight out of 10 of the states with the greatest percentage of growth between 2000 and 2010 were right to work states. Eight out of 10 of the <coughs> lowest uh, percentage gross domestic product um, states were compulsory union states. Uh, that, that's kind of telling. In, you know, in 1999, 20% uh, more 25 to 34 year olds were in right to work states than they were in 1999. These are folks that are gonna to have to replace me in whatever it is I'm doing uh, sometime in the future who are leaving Indiana for right to work uh, states. Um, in non right to work states, the increase was only 3.3%. Um, I think the real story though is that um, 35 to 50% of the businesses looking to relocate uh, in Allen County and in the state of Indiana weren't even giving us a look. Now, those are the numbers, and you can probably spin those any way you want. But when I could, when I could stand there and talk to site selectors like Mark Williams and others who come in trying to locate businesses in Allen County, and they'll look me square in the eyes and say, "We're not, we're not even giving you a, a second look because you're not right to work." That's telling to me. That's extremely telling. So what Right to Work does is it puts another tool in the toolbox. Is it the panacea? Is it the silver bullet? Absolutely not. But is it something that we now can keep off the list that site selectors will check off in times when they're coming to locate a company here in Allen County? Yeah. 